Hey everyone, so today I'm going to be talking about this type of point in geometry. And so in math, you might know the Fermat point as the point in which in a triangle, some of the distance from that point to each of the three vertices of the triangle is minimized. And so for an equilateral triangle, if you've ever seen a Fermat point before or you've thought about it, you might know that the equilateral triangle has its Fermat point as its centroid. So that'd be somewhere around here. And if we connect this point to each of the vertices, so something like this, you know, it's bad drawing, but these three distances here, here, and here are going to be minimized. And in math, there are multiple ways in which we can show this, but today I'm going to be showing you a physics way to think about this problem and prove that for an equilateral triangle, this is the Fermat point. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to analyze a system in which we have a triangle. So let's see, I'm going to copy paste this triangle here. And this triangle is going to have pulleys attached on each of its vertices. So pretend this is an aerial view, you're looking at a pulley from above. And what's attached to these pulleys are strings. There are going to be strings laid over the pulleys onto this table-like triangle shape. So something like this. And these three strings are going to connect the center, almost like the diagram we have up here with the Fermat point. But what is going to happen is below this table, you're going to see these three strings having masses attached to them. So if we have, let's do a side view. This aerial. And then let's have a side view here. So a side view. And then the table is just going to be a line from the side. And we're going to have the three pulleys, let's say one here, one here, and then one on the other side of the triangle, it's going to look somewhere on the center here. And each of these are going to have strings attached to them, going over them. And now we're going to see it, it's the side view. And these are going to have masses attached to them as well. So these three masses, let's say each of mass M. And so we'll write it here as a variable actually, mass M. And these three masses will be hanging off of each of these three pulleys and they're going to connect at the center here. So now how does this relate to the Fermat points? Well, first let's analyze the forces here. If each of these have mass M, each of these are going to be pulling downwards with force M times G. And we know that there's going to be an equivalent tension force right here, tension. And let's assume the system is in static equilibrium. So static equilibrium. And the condition for static equilibrium means that nothing is moving. So if T and MG balance each other out and nothing is moving, we have that T is in fact equal to MG here, right? And by a string, we know that the equivalent tension on the string over here, say that's the corresponding one, T is going to be equal to MG. And because each of these three objects all have the same mass, we actually know that each of them are going to have a tension up here of T, which is equal to MG as well. So there are three forces. And now we know that if three forces are acting on the same point, and these three forces balance, because remember we're in static equilibrium here. If these three forces balance, the angle between them is 120. In fact, it's equal angular. Each of these angles will be 120 degrees. So our three strings will look something like this. Let me draw it over here. Each of these being 120. This is 120. And the third one is also 120. So that's what the system looks like when it's in static equilibrium with three equal masses. Now, you might be wondering even more, how does this relate back to the Fermat point, right? Well, to do this, we're going to look at energy now. We're going to define the zero height in terms of height. Let's say the table, this triangular table is at height zero. So that's going to be a reference point here. And we're going to sum the potential energies in terms of gravity for each of these three masses. So we're going to define a couple of variables now. Let's look back at our table here. This one's a bit messy, so let's go back to the original diagram. Let's say that this string, imagine this as a string, has length x1. This string has length x2, and this third one is x3. Now, if each of these total strings from the center median point all the way to the mass has total length L, so let's say length L, 
you know that the part hanging off of these is going to be, let's say this part right here, okay? So we don't know what this is, but if we do the math, the total length is L, this top part above the table is X minus one, so the part hanging off, hanging off is just L minus X one, right? And so that's gonna be the height that it's below the zero point. And so now let's move down a bit. Now let's write our energy equation. Let's look at this first mass, which has length x one on the top. So our energy equation is gonna be it's for the first mass. Remember, this is below zero. So if it's five below zero, for instance, we're gonna have a height of negative five. Remember the change in height is negative five from the zero point. So the potential energy would actually be m, g, and the height above zero. So that'd be negative. And then the length of this string is L minus x1. Right, so that's gonna give us a negative value because L minus x1 is a positive value. And similarly, we're gonna have u2 is equal to mg times minus L minus x2. And similarly, u3 equals mg of negative L minus x3. And this is gonna be convenient for us because the total system will have an energy. Let's write ut for u total. And it's gonna be a sum of each of these u's. And notice that, let's just put this negative sign into here. So we're gonna have x1 minus L instead of L minus x1. And so this is gonna have, we're gonna factor out the mg, mg, and it's just gonna be x1 minus L plus x2 minus L plus x3 minus L. So it's just gonna be x1 plus x2 plus x3, and there's gonna be three minus L's, so minus three L. And what's nice about this is that we notice that mg and three L for the problem are constant, right? The only part in which the Fermat point will change is really just x1, x1, x3. So these are gonna be the varying components in the expression, and they determine where the center is. Now we know that this has to be minimized, correct? So in static equilibrium, the potential energy of the system is minimized. In other words, it's a local minimum, there's nowhere else it'll go. It'll always go up if you move away from the static equilibrium. So this is actually minimized. And since the only varying part of the expression is x1 plus x2 and x3, this expression is minimized as well. So what happens is x1 plus x2 plus x3 is minimized. Well, in that case, if I move my triangle over here, we see that actually if x1, x2, and x3 are minimized, we have the minimized lengths from the center point of the median strings to each of the three vertices. And that's exactly the definition of the Fermat point. And that's how this system connects back to the equal, equilateral triangles from that point. And we know because of the forces we derived earlier that each of these are 120 degrees and they're equiangular. And that's how you show that the centroid of the equilateral triangle is actually the Fermat point using physics. Thanks for watching today's video.